Okay, what else have we got? She said, this is um, a film about the two New York Times journalists who blew the whistle on the Harvey Weinstein scandal, Megan Toohey and Jodie Cantor, played by Kerry Mulligan and Zoe Kazan. It's adapted from the book by Toohey and Cantor of the same name. Uh, and it's uh, the writer of the film is Rebecca Lenkovich, and it's directed by Maria Schrader. As with so many movies in this genre, it takes a stylistic lead from all the president's men. I mean, it is two journalists doggedly tracking down leads, working the phones, following the, well, following, you know, in, following the trail as far as it needs to go, despite meeting opposition. The difference is these are two women with children at home and husbands who are left holding the baby. So that in itself is kind of, you know, an interesting variant to the genre, which is so often about, you know, the male journalist doggedly doing this. We start with Trump getting elected in 2016, despite a number of credible sexual assaults against him. Um, the editors ask, where do we go from here? Because it seems that nobody cares. I mean, they just elected to president somebody who clearly has a number of very credible sexual assault allegations against him, and yet he still managed to get elected. So where do we take this story? Somebody says, Hollywood. Hollywood is worth investigating because we know for a fact that, you know, people have talked about terrible stories in Hollywood and immediately they get led to a mountain of suppressed evidence about Miramax as being a toxic work environment and specifically the environs of Harvey Weinstein. Everyone has a story, but no one will go on the record. Rose McGowan has already spoken out, but has been ignored and therefore is, you know, not particularly sympathetic towards a newspaper now coming to her and saying, we want to do this story. Other key cases, and I know this is recent history, so a lot of people will remember this anyway, include Ashley Judd, who plays herself in the film, recounting her own now well-documented experiences. Jennifer Ely is Lauren Madden, who is about to undergo surgery and so has her own personal life issues to deal with, but is a part of this story. And Samantha Morton, Zelda Perkins, who is one of the earliest witnesses to Weinstein's predatory behaviour, who has been hushed up via a gagging order. Here is those powerful scenes in the film, not least because Samantha Morton takes everything to a different level. I mean, I think Samantha Morton is just an extraordinary screen presence. And she, I mean, you can see just from that very brief clip, yes. you know, she's not messing around. So the film is a drama, but it also includes documentary elements. I mean, there is an audio tape that was first uncovered by Ronan Farrow of Weinstein harassing an assistant. Um, and of course, we now all know that the way this story finally progresses, that Weinstein ended up being convicted. In fact, even as this film is opening, there is another Weinstein trial going on. I mean, if, 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 if all things are equal, he will spend the rest of his life behind bars and deservedly so because he was a predator on an industrial level. But as that clip says, it's not just about him. It's about an entire system and hierarchy that enabled all this stuff to happen. It is a gripping story. It is solidly, if perhaps somewhat unremarkably told, and it has flopped. In the US, in its opening weekend, it took around 2 million from 2,000 theatres, which has been, there's been news stories written about this as being one of the worst major studio openings ever. The Hollywood Reporter story was headlined, why Hollywood's first Harvey Weinstein movie was sidelined in opening. Variety headline was, she said, bombs. Why aren't awards season movies resonating with audiences? And as you know, I mentioned before that, you know, Tarantino recently said this thing about, you know, movies are worse than, than they've ever been. Weinstein's own PR team have gloatingly issued a statement, you know, about w why the movie isn't doing well and and saying Harvey, the film producer, would have known that... No I mean, you know, which is repugnant on a level it really pains me to say. I think the simple thing is this. The reason that she said had a bad time in cinema, in um, the American box office, is it's a release strategy issue. You don't open these movies in 2000 theatres. If you look at Spotlight, it opened in five theatres and then it grew and it built. You look at, um, I mean, that, you know, that's a movie that went on to win big at the awards. You look at The Post, it had a slow rollout. And The Post is a very similar thing in terms of its, again, taking all the president's men as its kind of... You don't open these movies in 2000 theatres. Apparently, the reason it did is that in the post-pandemic era, there has been 
a big wobble about the idea of slow rollout strategies because key audiences for these movies have lost the cinema habit, and so the you have a you're kind of in a in a bind in which you have to go for broke. It's all or nothing, and that's a that is completely inappropriate opening strategy. I'm not pointing the finger at the studio and saying, you know, you drop the ball. It's because of the way that the market is now, it is much harder for a strategy that is designed for this kind of movie, which is you start small, you build, you know, you go five theatres, ten theatres, you go key cities, and then you build out. So all the kind of, I have to confess, either horrified or gloating accounts of how poorly the box office is done are, I believe, completely unfair to the film and have tell us something about the industry, but they don't tell us something about the film. This is a solidly made, you know, gripping and frankly horrifying story that deserved better, and I believe it'll probably get a better response here. I mean, it's had very good notices, and of course it's an awards contender because we're now in awards corridor. It is just fantastically unfortunate that the industrial circumstances put it in a position that it should never have been in. That's a useful corrective. I should go out and see it deliberately. Well done. Oh, wow, you've made it to the end. So, as Cliff would have said, congratulations. And now that you're here, let me tell you about all our other offerings. We have other offerings? We have other offerings. You know, reviews and big-name guests, such as... Tom Hanks. Wow. Alicia Vikander. Wow. Tom Hiddleston. Two Toms. If you are a subscriber, you get all the extra bonus features like uh, one frame back, bonus reviews, that kind of thing. And our new feature, question Smestion. So if you want to keep up to date with all of this here on YouTube, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also go to kermodeandmayo.com for all the new stuff about the podcast. Tap the link. Go on. Tap the link. You know you want to.